Okay, even more proof, folks. Either that or we do have a planet on fire, okay, from either being uh, from a flare, from uh, the sun, or the supergiants, uh, i.e., bam, okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and research here, i.e., there is your time and date of the stamp of the picture. So you got a long ass tail, it's coming into the sun. This shot is, Alasco 3 is from behind the sun, folks, okay. And let's show some x-ray shots of photos, i.e. behind the sun here. And we've already proved, watch my last video just before this one. Okay, go to Itchy's site, folks. Uh, Itchy, come into my site and put your, put a comment in and put your, so that everybody can have a quick tab to your, uh, your site again. And let's go ahead, and they don't like me showing that because they know what I want to do on that. So hang on. Yeah, so Itchy, get in there and go ahead and go in my site. And everybody in Cali, uh, there it comes. And Hawaii has probably seen a lot of it. Anybody that's fishing and everything out way up north. So the idea that there it comes and where it's at now, day 4235, year 13.2, number. Uh, I don't think you pay attention to those years. Basically, this stuff's coming. The debris from... Okay, so the idea that the darker the color, the more I would figure radiation because or it doesn't matter, you're going to have junk. So there's the junk in the trunk and the message in the bottle coming from Japan there. Uh, I guess maybe in the spring of this coming year because a year and a half so maybe you can go by that I guess so since he's got days in a year so the message in the bottle is taking a long time to come but you are going to start seeing debris basically in those times I guess that time in that year and I'm gonna go because the idea that this has already showed you the little bit closer to the time in the year in the video so it's coming debris from Fukujima Fuka fudge up so this is your time on this and then this is triangulations blown up and you can see the uh, electromagnification and the sun rays so in space and that's basically electrical magnet there in space gives its signatures off and yes folks that we can take the blinder off and the block the sun out and they just put a little dot there so okay so you get a good and that thing is basically from what I can tell in these shots here you're gonna end up seeing that this object here that we get on x-ray vision is basically just like it just did there it's putting out a halo effect and that's probably giving us, and this here real fast, this here, anomaly here, where I'm circling at, freeze it and look at it, good on your screen. That is the cluster that we end up seeing down at the sunrise. You get that cluster right there in the sunrise down, I mean, not at the sunrise, you get it at 5 to 6 p.m. UTC time on anything that you look at from KC Station and anything Antarctic that you get that daytime cluster and it ends up being on the uh, so there's the halo that's what's giving us our dark gray and if it's a reflection from this then it's coming from the sun so so there's the triangulations here's the triangulations around the sun there's all kinds of triangulations around the sun that we were able to get out of these pictures uh, that I did on this and showed you the time earlier and basically we'll end up popping back into it here in a second of these triangulations that are around the sun. So we are definitely in a going into the supergiants. The supergiants and the sun are the big bang. So and we are going to get some big bangs more than likely and we are basically getting them. So uh 
issues with getting tube and tube and legal and everything and everybody and government control is trying to hush everybody up on what's going on. So, i.e., no matter what, if this is what our planet is there, there's Aurora, basically off and off, off and off. So Earth's almost doing like a big. We got to be moving a little bit left and right, folks. When you start seeing this, okay. You've seen it when I showed you last time and the idea that it's left like this and going way right on top. So we are doing a twist, okay? Slow turn, twist. Uh, that's what they're doing. Also, I wanted to let you know about the idea that when I caught them down there in Casey, and let me see if I could uh, show you some more pictures. Of, and there you go. There's another fresh shot on Alaska of that, which basically we got a planet on fire. Or is that the object that was moving along, like I said, with the uh, faster moving part of Lovejoy. So that means this is hella bigger, folks. That means this is hella bigger. So we're going to see what happens. The sun's is humongous, so I think it can handle it. But we have got to start wondering about what is to come with the idea that it being in the super giants like that and getting its ass kicked and then all this other stuff coming in, okay? Last night's action on Rigel Canteris B, more than likely until proven wrong, it doesn't really matter about being whichever one it is, is here you go on last night's nighttime action and let's get it up to 200 I'm pretty sure I can go to without blopping out and there you go don't care about the distance too much because it's funny all you out but the idea that you can see it even burning through the cloud at nighttime clouds at nighttime and yes folks it's not the moon as you can see totally circular so the idea that it's not the moon and it's basically not the sun, it is our Rigel Canteris B more than likely or one of the other suns of the supergiants which is way hella far away. But the idea that the sun is in the supergiants and until the sun comes out of the supergiants, the idea we follow the sun. So we're going to go where the sun's going. So that stuff up there that's hitting the sun is what you got to start realizing and forget about close objects near earth and so forth and so on. It's the idea we're going to follow that path and what is going to end up hitting there. And then the Big Bang system, the idea that we know now pretty much definite that the idea that is coming very much true, that the idea the sun went into the supergiants at one point in time in stereo in space at one point in time. And these galaxies are melding or it doesn't matter, new action. The sun is in the supergiants no matter what. So the idea that these objects are a long ways away from us now, but we're going to follow the sun and we're going to end up hitting debris just like almost like that in how many years and the idea of an ocean and that's the pressure of space where the astronauts practice in the doggone water is the idea that when are we going to hit, so i.e. the message in a bottle, when are we going to get close to anything dangerous up there? So here's Phobos. And that uh, it does rise and fall. There you go. Brighter than second magnitude. Nearby close objects to that. That's Mars. It's where this is the moon of Mars, and there's two of them. And let's go to Mars. So Mars is hell closest to us now. So that's the idea that we're gonna have. We should be getting up there like crazy with anything to probe that. Probably other countries too. It's probably going to be start bitching about the idea that well, you're going there and you're putting a probe in here. So there's a mass of Mars. It's not very really large. So let's find out where Mercury's at. See if it's on fire, and also show you the sky chart. So there is a dying planet coming in to hit the sun, or get damn close to it, or graze the sun. Okay. Now. We already knew about Lovejoy, and it can't be Mercury on fire up there because it's closer to the Earth than it's ever been in a hell of a long time. Current and largest distance orbit and nearest distance is three three seven zero zero IU, so it can get a hell of a lot closer to us. Okay, because it's been a hell, it gets a hell of a lot closer to us. Mercury does. Okay, now it's not Mercury on fire, and there's the stats on Mercury. You can, you know, like I say, I always scroll through a lot of stuff real fast. So there's your current sun's always right there in the deal. And the idea that we're going to go ahead and look at, we know it's not Mars on fire, and I'm going to show you that it can't be Venus. <laughs> well, we know that, uh, duh. It's the humongous most thing. Out. Okay, so current sky chart in North America. And there you go. So we know it can't be Venus, and we know it can't be Jupiter. 
the Jupiter's too damn big and way, you know, a duh. This, so that, now we're going to go to, and that's basically showing you where Mercury's at. Should be Mercury is over the deal. So that's in our North America view. Okay, so there's your constellations for the night. And any idea, you knew that the idea that I believe it was the other night that, and then it should be, the, zen the zenith should still pretty much be on our north, I mean, at Antarctica in our south pole. So, i.e., this current latest Lasco from behind the sun and something's coming into the sun and it's going to be more than likely like I was saying before the giant more than likely whatever the hell was coming along with the smaller Phoenix so on another Soho here was part of uh, Lovejoy okay or basically it a very large mass but this, this thing coming in is hella bigger than that as you can see that this before it hit the sun or part of the material that went by. Okay, now this was an entering shot because they stripped this out and blocked the material there. And basically, I think it's that dark object that I just showed you and x rayed in, okay, or something else because they blocked that out on Helios server on a video. I haven't had time to go play and watch that video, so go watch that one that's got the hatches. Here's the stuff the lots of triangulation still down there, and it's never going to go anywhere. It's going to keep coming in black light, okay. Some of these were weather shots, and let me see if I can... Okay, this is a different shot, and the idea that that is triangulation in this material down there, or black light that gets reflected down to Earth. Okay, and let me see if I can see the time on this. There. So the idea that noon daylight time, folks, and there's another triangulation right out there. So basically the sun is getting that from all those triangulations that are up by the sun. All the triangulations, this Earth is getting those down here. And there is that at one in the morning hour, our object off Rigel Canteris B. And that triangulation doesn't go away. And the idea, I am starting to wonder the idea that some of them do look like, but. And down there, there is a picture from, and they have old, and you're talking to electrician, lights. That's an old eggshell fluorescent light. It will not reflect light out these windows where those cameras are getting those shots, okay? So it's absolutely objects out there during the day and at night. At Basically, you just get daylight shots there. I mean, well, it's 23, 24 hours with daylight, so there you go. Two good weather shots of that strip down there, okay? Good weather, and you can see the strip, okay? And otherwise, it's clear skies, too, for the wintertime. I want to say hi to everybody on the Aurora Australis. If I'm saying it wrong, and this is what the action you get. Watch the clock and the time, folks. And the idea that we will get our object. And you're gonna, I'm just going to give you these real fast. And the idea that you're going to notice that this bops back and forth. Okay, It goes in and out, and it's also in the reflection down there on the bottom. So it that proves even more that I told you this camera glitch bullshit. It's a bunch of BS. Okay, It's not a camera glitch. That's the object in front of it. Now, also, at the 12 p.m., and so forth and so on. Okay, that's it. Okay, when you see these earlier hour times on these shots that I'm showing you here, uh, the AM shots and so forth and so on, there is also an object that is in front of the sun. Okay, more than likely Rigel Canteris B and one of its moons then is what we're pretty much getting this down to be in front of there, which ends up being the baby blue Kachina or whatever you heck you want to call it. Okay, so I'm going to keep giving you these shots here on this like I've done in the past, giving you, and then you can play and go through these because you'll see the times and you can sort them out. I just keep on trying to snap them off the video so you can see the objects. Now, one thing real fast, it does have so much heat that it, it makes these little clouds a puff out of the moisture in the cool air down there in the Antarctic, okay? It makes little puff clouds just like what we get from the, from the other objects in the supergiants and also the sun. And the idea that there'll be a shot here that you'll see that the idea that it'll show you that it's the sun cluster during the daytime hours when you see that glimmer that we'd also see that glimmer there is daylight time hours and in the evening, okay? It comes from that glare off the sun, okay? And the sun is at its furthest distance from us and we basically are going to start going towards the sun, ladies and gentlemen. So in a winter solstice right now, we are supposed to be the farthest away from the sun that the sun would normally be away from the earth. Well, we are at an all-time closeness recorded to the sun, okay? That at 12.30 a.m. is not the sun. That is Rigel Canteris B and that moon that goes around that. So, 
It's more indefinite now. And let me give you, can't be Mercury. You'll see it burning in the west tonight. Not Mercury, but a big planet dying star. Dying planet can hit the sun.